All right, just gonna kind of sit here, see if anybody pops up. But uh, I'm sorry for the video quality; is is not that great. I'm just sitting here and uh, figured I would talk with you about health and fitness. Um, health and fitness is a big thing. In this day and age, everybody has some type of goal, whether they want to get big arms, big chest, big shoulders, huge legs like the Hulk, <laughs> or if they want to lose weight. Because you have the two extremes, the people that want to gain and the people that want to lose. 90% of the people probably, well, let's not do 90%. Let's do a 60-40 difference. 60% of the people want to lose and maybe 40% want to gain. So when we're talking about how to maintain fitness, it starts with you. And I kind of did a video yesterday in regards to five strategies or tips that are going to help you for success in 2020. Um, meeting 2020 New Year's resolutions. So one of those tips that I had talked about was starting with you. You are the person that decides what is going to happen. You are the person who decides what plans and steps you're going to take to achieve your goal. Of course, there's going to be obstacles and barriers in a way. However, with that all in your corner, you make the decision as to where you want to start. Some people will start in their gym. Some people don't belong to a gym, so they don't know where to start. I'll give you some examples. And everything that I talk to you about is going to be from personal experience. Um, now, before I start the true discussion, I wrote a little message off to the side. But I'll say it verbally. Um, if anybody, tonight we're going to be, actually today, we're going to be talking about health and fitness. Um, talking about workout exercises, dieting, meal prepping. Um, any questions that you may have from personal experience or questions that you may have in regards to how you will attain those goals, you can just answer them right here in the column that says live chat. Um, so with that being said, um, from personal experience, I've been in fitness for a long time. I've been in fitness since I was four years old, actually. Played soccer growing up in a local league. Then I played on a local team um, that traveled throughout our region. And in the summers, as I got older, I played in an Olympic developmental team. Um, doesn't mean that I was trying out for the Olympics, but what it is is that they would take the best kids from the league and they would put them on that team. So myself and about, I want to say 14, 13 or 14 other kids uh, were chosen from a tryout. And we traveled throughout the eastern coast. We did um, southern New Jersey, Delaware, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. Um, and we did successful. We actually came in first in most of the tournaments. I think one or two tournaments we came um, in second, and one of them we didn't even place because we got blown out. Reason being was we, my uh, father coached me. He always believed that we should play a level or two up so that would help us develop. Later on in life, um, in eighth grade, I started practicing with the high school team, and once I got to high school, played four years varsity. I was a co-captain my senior year. Then I went to college, which was like a whole different ballgame. I uh, went to college, and then just lower this a bit. Yeah. So I went to college, and I tried playing. Played about half a semester, and um, things just it just didn't work out. I couldn't maintain what was needed for me on the field and off the field. My academics, and for me and my family, academics was always first. So. I worked out from here and there, and I still played on some teams. I played on some semi-professional teams um, within my area, 
and played in adult leagues just to maintain fitness, played indoor, all that. So as you can tell, um, fitness was always in my life. And now as an adult, I understand the need for fitness and why I'm pushing it so much to educate people about the importance of fitness. Now, I always say, if you exercise, you take care of yourself and you eat right. The older you get, the younger you're going to maintain. In my gym currently, I'm at Top Shelf Fitness and Nutritional Store in Lake Apakong, New Jersey. Two locations, Lake Apakong and Rockaway, New Jersey. So for any of you, Morris County area, or Northern region, Morris, Sussex County, I would say check out Top Shelf Fitness. A really great gym. Um, the owners are IFBB Pro bodybuilders and they're really a great couple like Tommy and Leanna they're really nice people they're down to earth they'll talk with you like they'll make time for you it's not like a commercial gym where most nine times out of ten you go in you don't even meet the owner or you may know who the owner is but he doesn't really he or she doesn't really interact with you on that level so it's pretty cool like when they work out with you right next to you and you're like oh you know that person is like a pro and but they act like a regular human being, you know, they don't, they're not like, well, I'm here and you're here, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just a, a whole different thing. But, um, so let's talk about diet. Okay. I like to go by the 80, 20 rule, even though in some of my other videos, I did the 90, 20 statement. Um, which was 90% diet, 10% everything else. Um, but let's go by the 80-20 rule. So the 80-20 rule means that 80% of everything is diet and 20 is everything else. Fitness, lifestyle, what you choose to put in your body, what you choose to drink or not drink, um, daily practices in life, whatever it may be. So diet is a huge component of where you will either be successful or fail when it comes to your fitness goals. The reason I say that is if you are overeating, if you're just putting whatever in your plate and you don't even know what it is, you just know that it tastes good, which obviously, you know, if if I have my piece of chocolate cake and I have my uh, big lasagna, for me, it's going to feel nice because it's like, I like that food. It's a pleasure food. But if I want to attain my fitness goals, then I'm not going to attain them. Those items will get in my way. So some of the things that you have to cut out, I know a lot of you are going to be sad about this, but you you really have to take it seriously because you have to think about it in the long run, right? It's it's not about what are you going to lose um, or what you can't have. It's about what is going to take you to that next level that's going to help you to attain those goals, right? So first off the list is candy and sweets, okay? Most of candy and sweets are sugar, 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 sugar. That's why you hear the word sugar rush. People get and they get all energetic and all over the place. Like, so candy is definitely out. Okay. Um, next one is alcohol. All right. For all you youngins over there. I mean, I'm still young too. 32. But um, I feel 21. So I feel all you guys at 21. You know, you turn 21, you want to start drinking. Hey, some people are drinking at 15. 14 or 15, but, you know, we'll keep that on the low. <laughs> but, um, no, alcohol has to be cut out, too, because alcohol is actually all sugar um, for the most part. Um, the way that it processes in your body when you're drinking, it ends up uh, breaking down into sugar. So it does no benefit for you. You know, that's why they kind of have the joke, uh, beer belly. Beer is mostly like wheat and um, some other ingredients. 
but people just put on that weight on the belly and it is it looks terrible <laughs> it looks like they're nine months pregnant or something so um so alcohol is out and candy's out um the other thing along with sweets would be pies cakes um anything you can you can think about and you're probably thinking well what in the world can i have you know you can have food you can have certain desserts however if you choose to have a dessert and let's say you go to ShopRite or Publix or uh, what are some other supermarkets out there that I'm unaware of? Acme, uh, Walmart, Target, now they sell everything too. So if you're going to any of them stores and you're buying a pie, don't go and eat the whole pie that day. Or actually, most people probably won't eat the whole pie, but they'll buy a box of cookies, chocolate chip cookies with M&Ms or something like that. I know they look good. You know, I've... I'm definitely guilty of going in on half a pack sometimes because I'm just hungry. But you go and buy your favorite pack of cookies and you eat the whole cookie. And then you go and work out. Or you go and um you go and work out, you just pretty much or you worked out and that's what you want to go snack on, you pretty much just wasted your workout, you know? Um so Nothing heavy, nothing with a lot of saturated fats. I mean, fats are good for you because your body needs to have fat. Your body needs to have carbs. Your body needs to have protein. Um, our body is already create, uh, creatine, creatinine. Our bodies are 90% water. Okay. A lot of the supplements that are out there. I don't even know why I talked about that because I'm going to actually go to that in a later portion. But supplements is another thing. Um, so just lay off all the sweets and all that. The last thing I'll say to lay off of for now would be fast food. Okay. And by fast food, I mean Popeye's. I see y'all on your videos. Popeye's, KFC, chicken sandwiches, uh, fried chicken. Definitely a no no with fried food because of the oil. It's all like, it's all pretty much oil. If you were to melt all that fried stuff, it would be all oil. And it would be bad oil for you. Like, you're just like, if you just keep on eating fried foods and fast foods for like a good amount of your life, you're going to like, your arteries and your body is going to cry. You know, you're going to clog arteries from all the disgusting ingredients they use to cook all that food. So no Wendy's, no Burger King, no McDonald's, okay? No checkers, no White Castle, none of that, all right? If you truly have a goal, okay, and we're going to choose weight loss for, for this example. Let's say you want to overall lose 50 pounds, right? Now, healthy-wise, you should lose, you could, you should lose one to two pounds a month. However, you could lose five, maybe seven pounds a month, but it's really a lot pushing it. Five is even pushing it. If you really want to be healthy about it, you can you can take off like a pound a week if at most that. Um, so your goal is to lose weight. Okay. So when I talk about portion control. Portion control is big for your meal. You're going to take a whole circle, right? This big circle right here is your plate. Okay? Let's actually see if I can... I was going to see if I can draw a circle because it would be better that way. Just give me, like, a second. I'm blocking the camera here. Yeah, here we go. Not everybody's an audio learner. I'm certainly not an audio learner. So, get that little close up. So, I'm a visual learner. All visual. All right. So, I'm going to draw the circle here, right? This right here is our plate. Okay. We're going to break it up into three. Okay. Kind of like the piece on me. 
Okay, excuse the proportions, but that's that. All right, so when we're doing protein, you're going to get a palm size. My hands are big, everybody's are different, but you're gonna get a palm size and the thickness, that's gonna be your protein. Whether that be fish, whether that be chicken, whether that be meat, whether that be soy products such as tofu. Okay. And you can even get a uh, protein from Edamon. It's like a green looking pea. Um, I would recommend seasoning it because by itself it has a pretty bland taste. So over here on the bigger portion, we're going to write palm size. Fish, poultry, meat, and soy products. Okay. Now, for carbs, okay, carbs is going to be a fist size. Okay, so you're going to visually look at your fist and say. Or how much could I get out of that? Now, what I do is if I'm, if I'm having rice, I'll do half a cup of rice. Um, you can do half a cup of rice. You could do half a big potato. Um, a small sweet potato is, is really up to you, but it has to be this size. So we're going to rate carbs. Okay. And we'll get into that maybe in another video i'm not sure uh time wise so carbs is going to be fist size portion okay and that's going to be rice potatoes etc okay so far, this is what we're looking at, okay? I'm trying to get it close so you can see it. But um, I'm going to see if I can write this down in the uh, comments for you guys. Otherwise, uh, I might just write it here in the live stream on the side um, since it's my first time doing a live chat. Okay, now the third, part, the third portion of your meal would be vegetables, okay? Anything vegetables. It could be uh, split peas, it could be lentils, it could be tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, peppers, sautéed vegetables, whatever it is that you want, you can have it, okay? So, we're going to write veggies, okay? So, our dish is complete, all right? Veggies here, carbs here. Protein here. Okay. All right. That's enough of visuals. Okay. Now, how many times a day should you eat? You want to lose weight, right? So, we always, you will see many different diets out there. You have paleo diets, you have South Beach diets. You have vegan diet, soy diet, uh, Atkins diet. I mean, there's, there's so many diets out there. And if you go to the bookstore and look at all the shelves of diets, there's probably like a good hundred books on diets. Um, I think I was reading an article uh, the other day on, on men's fitness, and they were talking about how there's 129,720-something titles Related to, to weight loss and fitness. Now it's fitness and then it's weight loss. Like those are the two biggest things. All right. How much should you eat? Okay. It's going to vary. Um, this is something that you should. I would bet. I'm not a nutritionist. So I'm just talking about off of based off of personal experience. All right. Um, personal experience myself. Personal experiences dealing with clients and other individuals, okay? 
Breakfast is your most important meal of the day. It's your kickstart. Okay. Um, for breakfast, you can have a boiled egg, hard boiled egg, okay, with some vegetables. And you can have half a cup of oatmeal with some cinnamon or a chopped up strawberry or something like that. Okay, that's going to be your meal. Then you're gonna have a snack. That can be a um, like a protein shake. Okay, it could be a meal replacement shake if you so choose. But be careful when you're picking a meal replacement um, shake as to what the ingredients are and what's the main purpose for it. Um, so you can have your meal for breakfast and then your snack. Okay. Now, if you're not a lunch eater. I prefer that you have at least your breakfast and your dinner. If you eat three meals a day, that's fine. For lunch, you can have something simple as, let's say, half a sandwich with a piece of avocado and, um, let's say, a four-ounce piece of chicken. Okay, Four-ounce piece of chicken, maybe lettuce and tomato. Um, to have vegetables in there, protein as your chicken, carbs as your choice of bread, if you so choose to have bread with it. Um, however, I would recommend no bread. What you can do as a bread substitute is you can have a quarter cup of rice, four ounce piece of chicken, and then uh, have avocado with that if you so choose. Okay. Then after your lunch, um, Maybe two hours later, three hours later, depending on how you're feeling, will be another snack. Now, that can be some fruits and vegetables. That can be another meal replacement shake or protein shake. It's entirely up to you as to what you choose as a snack. But a snack will not be a package of cookies or, um, you know, another thing that you could have is yogurt. Can get some yogurt you can either get the drinkable yogurt and maybe have like four to six ounces of the drinkable yogurt or just have like a small yo play or uh dannon uh yogurt activia whichever one that you choose then for dinner you're gonna have what i did for the plate okay so you're gonna have protein okay you're gonna have carbs and you're gonna have vegetables. You have to have those three. So you can choose to have chicken. It has to be skinless. You cannot have the fat on it or anything like that. So boneless, skinless chicken breast, um, filleted fish, and the meat, if you so choose, um, has to be lean. Okay, any of the meats that you have have to be lean. I'm not big on uh, red meat, so I don't really recommend red meat but if you have to go with that i go to a small like four to six ounce piece of, of steak you get a chuck roast steak or chuck eye steak um outside of that i would say best bet is the chicken um you can always get boneless skinless uh chicken breast and buy them in packs and you can prep for the week on that um outside of that you can always go with turkey Turkey is uh, one of the leaner types of um, poultry that's out there. So you can do that as well. Uh, so that's just an overview of what you can have in a day. You could have three meals. You could have two days. I mean, two meals. But don't starve yourself and, and think that, well, the best way for me to lose weight is to starve myself by eating one meal a day and then fasting throughout the day and just drinking water. It, it's not going to work. There's people, um, as somebody that I used to work with in my first job, who was trying to lose weight. And she wasn't losing any weight because she was eating salad. Okay? You cannot just eat salad all day and expect that you're going to lose weight because you're eating plants. Okay? When you have a salad, there's a variety of different things in the salad. And the reason that she wasn't Losing the weight was because she was putting dressing on it. She was putting croutons in it. 
and she was having cheese inside of it. Okay? All fattening things, all things that will store fat in your body. All right, so that's one component of dieting. Now, I know some of you will have some other questions, and we may get into that at a, at a later time, but I want to discuss just a brief overview of everything so I'm not overwhelming everything. So one thing I touched upon was fat stores. Okay? This all depends, highly depends on your metabolism. Okay. Metabolism depends on your level of activity. Okay. Now, there may be some genetic factors. There may be some predisposed issues that may prevent you from having a higher metabolism. However, to start off, you don't need a gym. And let me make that very clear. You do not need a gym to stay fit or work out. It's not a requirement. You have your body, right? And I said this to in my video yesterday, um, that the main things that you can do, push-ups, sit-ups, crunches, pull-ups, chin-ups, body squats, okay? I just named you like eight different things that you could do just with your body. You could do punches. Okay? You can lift uh I don't know. Lift up a bottle of water. They always say when you go walking to have two bottles of water in your hand. So you use it as like a resistance weight when you're walking if you so choose to have that. So when you're walking, try to walk at a comfortable pace but also push yourself a little bit. Walk a little fast, but not too fast. So the point that you're like, this is too fast, this is too fast. I don't want you doing it, okay? I don't want you catching an asthma attack or having any cardiovascular issues early on. When you start off, you have to start off slow. It's great to want to have goals to say, well, I'm going to go work out five times a week, or I'm going to run a 5K next month. If you have not worked out, if you have not done anything, do not do a 5K next month and do not start off with five days a week working out. Okay. For those who benefit this, like myself, I could take a month off easily and then just go right back. It's, it's just like riding a bicycle. You have muscle memory. Everything just comes to fruition. That it's like, oh, okay, I used to exercise, I used to do this. I might have to start off slow, of course, with my lifting and, you know, with my with my cardiovascular activity. Um, but eventually, I will pick up back. It might even be stronger, it might even be faster. The body works in a weird way. So, um, let's see what this thing is. So I'm going I'm to type in here. What I had just discussed to you regarding the dishes, because I don't want to um, forget about that. So I'm talking about the protein, the carbs, and the vegetables in your meals. Okay, so that's in there. Um, all right, so what I was talking about was fitness. How do you start off? So for, for most of you who are not really into fitness or kind of like hit or miss with, with starting off for a workout or exercise, um, I would say that start off with two days a week. You could try to push yourself to three, but I'd rather you start off 
and say, well, I'm going to walk on Monday and I'll walk on Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. If you really feel like pushing yourself to a third day, pick a Saturday or Sunday, pick a weekend day. Okay. If you choose to do three days, you could do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You could do, or you could do Monday, Thursday, and let's say Sunday or something like that, Saturday. However, when your week starts, whether it starts on a Sunday or a Monday, um, that's something that you would have to go into. You know, that's something you would have to figure out. Um, so I say start off realistic with with a short number of days. And for the sake of this conversation, we're going to start with two days a week. So your exercise plan is going to be two days a week of walking. Okay. Now that's medium level of speed walking. Not fast, not too slow, but enough to challenge you. And you're going to do that for 30 minutes. Okay, you could do up to 20 minutes, but I prefer you try to do up to 30 minutes because you're going to have to build your body up to a level where your heart is going to work. And the only way your heart is going to get stronger is if you work it. And like I said, do not overwork it. Okay, because we have to have a balance when we're working out and doing our exercises. You see the people in the gym are running so fast you can't even like see their legs. And that's fine and all because it works for them. Okay. But um in another video I end up going over workout techniques and all that. It's just that I wanted to do a live chat and see if um you know I could provide you guys with some education because most of my channel is is workout videos and uh, motivation and inspiration to really inspire others to achieve their goals. And, and that's my main thing. I want to be able to create a platform for people to feel comfortable to ask me questions for me to help me help me to help them attain their goals. And if I don't know the answer, because I'm not, you know, an expert or anything like that. I don't have degrees in exercise science or sports and kinesiology, but I can tell you from personal experience what I've had to go through. And the kind of person that, that I am is I'm what you would quote unquote be a hard gainer. Okay. I was a skinny little twig the size of this pencil this this pen growing up. Because of sports. I just stayed skinny. I stayed in shape. You know, but I didn't pack on any muscle until college. Um and I take some supplements. I took a like a weight gainer or something like that and I ended up gaining like eight to ten pounds. And then uh because most of the time I was 185. I was 175 all of high school, all four years. I maintained that weight. And then in college, I was like 185. But uh, over the last couple of years, I would say, well, where I'm at right now, um, I'm at two, I'm between 215 and 220. But I'm content with that because uh, my size and everything is balanced. You know, I work out my legs, I work out my upper body, and the way that I do my workouts is I don't do a full body workout every time I go. I isolate my uh, muscle groups, and that's what I work on. So you'll never see me in a video uh, doing a full body workout. That'll just never happen because I learned over time the importance of just focusing on one body part at a time. Because if, if you get mixed up in doing everything, you're just going to like, you're going to lose track of what it is that you're actually um, working towards. So to get back, we're going to start two days a week, walking 30 minutes. Okay. In between that time, you would do stretching of some sort. Um, you can stretch for five to ten minutes um, two times out the week. It doesn't have to be nothing crazy because... Stretching is very important for flexibility and strength. Um, and why is flexibility and strength important? It's so you don't get injured. Any body weight exercises that you do, the chance of you getting hurt is very slim, but it can still happen. You can slip on ice. You can slip on uh, a sidewalk or something like that. You can fall and hit your elbow. Whatever the case is, things happen. You know, it's life. Um, so while the chances of you getting 
injured doing bodyweight exercises is low, it could still happen. Now, the chance increases way higher when you're working with weights. Um, it's a lot higher when you're working with free weights, such as dumbbells. Like a lot of my workouts, you'll see me lifting dumbbells. You'll see me working with the barbell, which is a long Olympic bar um, that I use for squats, deadlifts, um, inverted rows for the back, a lot of that. Um, so that's really where the danger lies. But if you practice safely, um, then you should be okay. So you're going to start walking two days a week. In between that time, you're going to stretch. You're going to take care of your mind and your body by eating right. Okay. Um, if you do belong to a gym, you can start off two to three days a week as well. Um, and you will do two to three days a week for the first month. Okay. Reason being is that our bodies naturally have to develop a pattern. Um, it's my understanding that if you repeat a word 19 times, like over time or whatever the case is, you probably will not forget that word um, because your your mind, the way that it works, is if you repeat things over and over and over and over again, it doesn't forget. It stores itself like a computer's hard drive. It stores data inside your mind to be able for you to have uh, memory recall when you need. So you're going to start off for two to three times a week at the gym or at your home or at the park, your local community center, wherever, two to three times a week for the first month. Okay. And in that first month, you're going to practice portion control size meal. Meaning, Palm size and thickness for protein, fist size for carbs, and fist size for veggie. Okay. Just because I said everything else veggies doesn't mean veggies, but the way that that works science wise, palm size and thickness of protein, fist size of carbs, fist size of veggie. So um, we're going to do that. All right, and I want you guys to let me know how that works out for you. Many of you have left comments for me in my previous video saying, you know, I want to get to the gym. I need to get to the gym. This motivated me to get to the gym. And I actually have one person who, um, one, one of the subscribers actually reached out and said um, that, he, that watching my videos actually motivated him to go back to the gym. So that was really good. That was really made me happy um, to be able to see that my videos had motivated this guy to go back, you know, and I told him, like, let me know, um, let me know how the videos, you know, let me know how the videos help you, if there's any questions you have or anything like that, you know, make sure you reach out and let me know. Um, it's, it's really important that you go and you better yourself, because we're all going to get old someday. You know, people like me, white people don't don't have genes on their side. <laughs> you just get wrinkly over time, you know. But um, if you if you uh, if you take care of yourself and you eat right, skin's gonna stay tight. My goal, as I always say, is um, the more that I work out, the more I'm gonna have tight skin. And just like when I'm seventy, I'm gonna be looking like I'm thirty, you know. I see we got somebody here in the live chat. What's good? <laughs> we got Didi up in the house. Finally got somebody watching. <laughs> That's all good. I, I really like um, educating people. And I really like being able to provide people with information that they may or may not have. You know, um, I, in my job, I work in behavioral health. I work in psychiatric emergency. And... Um, Part of my job is screening children and adults for um, acute crisis, whether that be psychosis or depression, whatever it is that people are going through. So, you know, my job is being able to assess them, being able to help them as much as possible. And it could be taxing. You could get burnt out real fast. But I love what I do. 
And that translates from, from my life. That translates into the things that I've learned in life. And what I'm getting at is no matter how many trainings you take, no matter how many classes you take, no matter how many videos you watch on YouTube or whatever the case is, you're always learning. You're always going to learn. There's always something new that you're going to have to learn <clears throat> for life. Whether it be for your job or whether it be for life, you want to be able to develop yourself into the best person that you can be. You know, why limit yourself or sell yourself short? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense and it doesn't add up. So, um, you know, with that being said, it's really important to take care of yourself. Like I said, everything starts with you. With you. you make the choice. And the choices that you make will decide your day. You know, if you say, well, I want to go to the gym uh, today for 30 minutes. But you're like, well, you know, I got to go food shopping. I got to take the kids here. And I got to go to school. And I got to do this. And I got to do that. Before you know it, you're not even going to go. Like, realistically. You know? And then you'll be like, oh, I'll go tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And then, you know, a whole month later, you've already paid your gym membership. I would say that you gave a donation to your gym. Okay. <clears throat> so don't give a donation to your gym. Use your donation to the gym. <laughs> Use your donation. Okay. And make it worthwhile. Okay. Don't let yourself continue to give donations every month because you feel like you're a nice person. All right. You're paying that money to use the gym. Whether it's ten dollars at Planet Fitness. $10 at Crunch, $20 at Retro, LA Fitness, wherever it is, make sure that you make the most of it. You don't have to be on no heavy machinery or lifting no heavy weights or going, oh, 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 <laughs> making no grunting noises. You don't, you know, there, there's no specific algorithm or, you know, equation out there that's going to help you attain. Well, I want to look like J-Lo. I want to look like Beyonce. I want to look like The Rock. I want to look like Shannon Tatum. You know, there's there's nothing out there. There's no machine that you could put yourself in that's going to say, well, you press A1 and I'm going to become that person. It would be nice, but I always say good things come in time. You have to wait for good things. You have to work for good things. If you don't work for it, then how can you even value it? You know? No, there's nothing, nothing good comes through. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, really, aside from that, um, I want to go get, I want to go look at my book shelf. I think I have like some fitness books or something um, that I can share with you guys. If I don't have fitness books, I probably got like some type of book that's going to help you. So I'm about to go take a look at that. Write this message. The spelling is terrible. Oh, I got mad stuff here. I was working on Canvas and paintings for people over the holidays, so forgive my mess. I'm not a messy person normally, so that's out of my character. Definitely out of my Yeah. <coughs> All right. I have a lot of books. I've collected tons of books over my life, but um, short story, I guess. When I was growing up, um, I had the dream of becoming a professional soccer player, and obviously, I know you're a number one fan. <laughs> You'd be like, "Cheering, hey, hey." <laughs> 
people make me happy, you know? But, um, so growing up, um, I want to be a professional soccer player. Obviously, that didn't happen because I'm sitting here talking to you through my, uh, you know, through my, uh, computer. So, I don't have no soccer jersey. You're not watching me on TV. But, um, I figured while I'm in the realm of soccer, I wanted to do something related to that. So, I said, well, I'm going to be a physical therapist. My first job actually was at a cancer rehabilitation. I was working as a rehab tech, and I was studying the anatomy charts, and, well, okay, here's the, here, here's the tobial band, and uh, here's the gluteus maximus, and all that. Like, I, I was looking at everything, because I knew that eventually I'd probably have to take anatomy and physiology one and two, uh, which is pretty much all memorization of body parts and all that other stuff that's important for a general understanding of the anatomy. And then uh, I went to college, and I took my classes, and I realized I suck at something. Like, bad, bad. Um, you know, I always joke that I had to take chemistry three times before I passed it. And at the time, it was not a fun, not a fun uh, thing to go through to fail three times. But I will tell you on the... Uh, on the third time of taking it, I had a really good teacher. And the way that she taught me was different than anybody else had taught me. So I ended up getting Fs in the first two and ended up getting a, a B plus uh, the time when she taught me. So something clicked, something worked. And, you know, but I didn't, I didn't continue with that. But I wanted to finish the class, even though I had failed um, twice. So. So that was that. And then I said, well, physical therapy is just not going to work out because I got to take all these other science classes. And it was just like, I can't attain that deal, that goal. But I always had a fascination, uh, no matter what, for the body and how it works and why why things happen, which is why I ended up ultimately going into psychology, um, because psychology is a study of human behavior. And um I find it very intriguing because with my job, I'm working with people that have a variety of different, um, you know, issues, whether it be mental illness, whether it be, you know, like some behavioral stuff, ADHD, ADD, which is, I feel like every other year there's a letter being added to it, you know, and uh, we have to do better as a society. And we have to do better as a system to be able to help people. So, fitness is my life. Health is my life. And I want to look good, you know? I want to look good and stay young. So, I wish I had a clear video here, but this laptop is, it is what it is. And I'm still creating content for y'all. So, just want y'all to know that I'm dedicated to being able to provide you with education to be able to help you attain your goals. So, let me stop talking a little bit. Tell you about this book. All right. The Human Body. All right. But when I saw this book, I was like, man, because the cover, like, if you look at the cover right here, you're like, wow, that's that's me underneath on my skin, you know? Look at that bulging eye and all those cracks in the in the skull. And then you got all the muscles and different arteries and things that run through the body. You know, so I'm I'm looking through the book, and I'm like, oh shit, I got a DVD here. So it's got the great thing about this DVD is that it is user friendly, and it's fully functional. I mean, anything that you click on, it tells you about it, and like you learn about muscle body parts that you didn't even know that you had. You know, we learn about the basic stuff: the butt, the face, the lips breast, you know, abs, all that stuff, legs, foot, that's basic stuff, but once you start getting to, like, the names that you can't pronounce, it's a, it's a rat, <laughs> you know, I always, I always said that if I was going to be a teacher, um, I would, I would most likely teach art, because art is what I like outside of fitness, and I'm really good at it, so I would teach something that I love, um, so, like, 
my side fascination is with the brain and how people pretty much with um criminally insane. I watched a lot of investigation discovery and um first forty eight, stuff like that, like a lot of documentaries about serial killers because it helps me to understand the body and the mind. And by that actually translate into health and fitness because if you understand how your mind and your body works, then you will understand what foods you can eat, what foods you can't eat. Um, you know, and then with fitness, what works for you and what doesn't. You know, you may have a weak uh, upper body. A lot of people have weak arms, and they say, "Well, you know, I don't really know how to work it. How can I make my arms stronger?" And it it's simple, but it's not simple for everybody. You know. So, when you open up the book, which is like, it's fascinating to me. Like, I'm a visual person. I love, I love things. So when I see something like that, I'm just intrigued. You know, picture, pictures mean a lot to me. Um, and I said I like art a lot, so I spend a lot of time at the art museum when I can and really, like, study the paintings and pay attention to what it is that's actually being depicted in the painting because you can look at something and be like oh wow it's so big it's nice use of colors and you know the way they painted it's so cool but really like i like depth i like having deep conversations and understanding things with people because most of the time people don't know how to carry conversations so you know part of that goes into who you are as a person and what kind of person you are <clears throat> so, talks about the different body systems, talks about um, genomes, which are fun for those that are in college. You're probably learning about genomes, which is uh, genetic instructions, like uh, chromosomes and all that fun stuff, cells, mitochondrial nuclides, all that fun stuff <laughs> that I have trouble pronouncing. But, um, it's really cool. I actually thought, um, as I'm looking through this book, because I haven't looked through this book in a long time. The, the reason the reason this book looks new is because I, I rarely open it up. But um, it's really cool. I mean, it has a lot of stuff, and it helps you to understand your body. I mean, the human body is right here. It, I think it was cheap, too. Like, this is probably, I don't know how much this book is, to be honest. Well, it says $35 USA. And I probably didn't pay thirty five for it, because um, I typically don't pay full price for stuff. I'm always looking for deals, so probably got this book for like twenty five or thirty dollars. So I'm about to go put it back. So I'm reading the comments from my friend that uh, it's never too late to teach us tricks. And it's all about how you connect with the students. And I'm in total agreement with that. You know, from personal experience, I didn't connect with a lot of my teachers. Um, and my teachers didn't connect with me. For one, the classes were always too big. And uh, I was just that kid that sat in the back of the class. I just wanted to learn and get the class over and done with. I'm still pretty much that person, but if I take a class that's really interesting to me, then I will engage in it and I will ask questions. Um, and I feel that like that's important, you know. Even if you're a quiet person um, and you have a question about something, like for me, I never felt comfortable answering a question or asking a question in class because I felt like embarrassed if I had the wrong answer. Even though I knew, like, obviously that's not the best way to learn, I would go after class and ask the question. And the teacher would be like, why didn't you ask in class? You know, and I'd be like, I oh, just, you know, didn't feel, just thought about it, you know, afterwards or whatever. So no matter what your age, no matter what your, your level that you are in life, we can always teach each other things. You know, it doesn't have to be from a training. It doesn't have to be, um, you can be a doctor. I could be a, a garbage person. You know, I could teach you something that, that you don't know as a doctor and you could teach me something, 
You don't know as a garbage person. It, just because you have a title doesn't mean, you know, social status and all the other stuff that people talk about. I, I see people on the same level. That's why <clears throat> when I do the work that I do, it really helps me connect with people because I don't see them as mentally ill patients. I see them as human beings and I treat them such as that. Maybe give me an attitude or something like that, depending on who you are. If I saw you a bunch of few, bunch of times, then I might have to be a little uh, not so nice, so to say. But overall, like the main thing is treating people with respect and dignity. And, you know, that comes from your upbringing. That comes from what your parents or who was the person who brought you up, whether that be yourself or family or something like that. And then you grow up in life, through college, you have a job, all that stuff. you got to use the skills that you have in life to be successful. Now, whether you work at a gas station, whether you work at a supermarket, whether you work at uh, a retail store or your CEO of some company, you still got to connect with people. You're still working with people, you know, and how you connect with people will be dependent upon the success of you. You know, if I'm here telling you all these things about fitness, but I don't believe it, then I'm going to come off as though I'm telling you like nonsense. You know, but this is all personal experience. These are all things that I've either gone through or I've learned from clients or, or patients or people that I've worked with. And that shaped me into the person that I am today. You know, I have really good parents um, who taught me morals and values that were very important to our culture. I was raised very strict, um, not like overly strict, but, you know, I had rules that I had to, to do. You know, I, I had chores that I had to do. And, you know, my friends were going out late at night. When I was in high school, I couldn't do that. You know, I had a curfew and I had to, excuse me, I had to respect that. So this all translates in into each other. You know, it, it, it's one big circle just going around and around and around. And you got fitness, you got health, and you got diet. And then in life, you got character, you got respect, and you got discipline. Right. And the character of the person you are will determine who you are. Right. So if you don't respect yourself, then. Then what? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't even make sense because if you don't respect yourself, how can you have respect for other people? If you don't love yourself, then you can't give love to anybody else. You know, so. If you. If you, it all starts with you. So if you're disciplined and you write out a simple plan, okay, and I'll review this because it's a long video, all right, everything starts with you and it has to start with you. You control the decisions and the choices that you make in life and you have to live with those. So in this video, we discuss a case of somebody wanting to lose weight, right, and where they're going to start from and how they're going to attain it. So they're going to start by writing down that goal, saying, I want to lose weight, okay? And you can have a visual board for yourself. You can have a dream board, or you can just write it down in your little notebook. I want to lose weight. And you can write down how, however many pounds you want to lose, however many inches you want to lose. Then from there, you're going to set up a, a workout plan, okay? And I said, for the first month, you're going to do two to three times a week for 30 minutes. And in between that time, you're going to stretch. You're going to take care of yourself. You're going to eat right. You're not going to engage in any bad practices that are going to get in the way of that. And you're going to hold yourself accountable. Okay? There's nobody else to blame but yourself for not attaining the goals in which you wish to attain. I can give you all the steps. I can give you all the things that you need to do to be successful. But if you don't practice them and you don't do them, then you can't blame me. You know? It's like handing something on a silver platter and then, you know, saying, oh, no, I don't want it because I, I don't want it to be this way. You know? Or, um, so, 
So you're going to do that. And then to review the food that you're supposed to eat, okay? No fried chicken, okay? No sweets, no candies, no alcohol. No, that's by chocolate cake, okay? <laughs> so, um, so palm size and thickness of protein. Fifth size of carbs, fifth size of vegetables. Your plate's going to be broken up into three parts, okay? I drew it on a circle, but because of the way the video is, it's, it's a little hard to do it. So I wrote it here in the column in the live chat section for you to see um, what it is that I had discussed. Um, so I should be dropping another video sometime this week. I finally got a new phone today because um, I've been having phone issues uh, probably for the past month or some change, but today was pretty much. The day that solidified me, um, the phone went in charge above 30%. So I can pretty much talk to anybody or have like, any real communication with anybody, including my number one fan here. Um, so make sure y'all go follow her. It, it's real hard to pronounce that first name, but I'm going to say the Avion, the Avion Griffin. Okay, the name is right here in the box. If you can't hear me, make sure you go follow her. All right. Um, she's got a dope little page. Sweet Southern gal. <laughs> nah, but she got some dope content. Um, some dope uh, Christmas vlogs. Um, just recently did a gingerbread house and uh, a vlog with opening gifts. So make sure y'all check that out and show love. Um, you know, I have a certain subscribers that are, are consistent people. Like, um, few other people I got, Average Will, um, he's a real good guy, very consistent with, with looping with me and supporting, um, Kayla Nicole, she's very consistent with, with supporting and looping as well, and, um, what's the other one, I got Strength Finders, I don't know if y'all are familiar with him, but, uh, Strength Finders Lifestyle, he's, he's kind of like, we're pretty much similar people with, like, workout and, and stuff like that, however, um, he's big on motivation and inspiring people. Um, so I, I really like feed off of those kind of people, you know, I mean, even though I got like 1.2 K subscribers, I'm not going to connect with all of them, you know, but I'm going to support them as long as they support me. So if I have time, you know, if I make time, I will get around to everybody's videos, at least show love to at least, you know, a few videos that I can. Um, but other than that, I'm about to end this live stream. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram. It's at T H E dot M C V, the number eight and the letter R. So the dot motivator. And then also I have a fitness and health blog um, that I plan on sharing with y'all once I get everything. Um, actually, it might be in my bio in my on my IG account. So if you check on um, above my hyperlink or below it, um, there should be a link there that says check out, check out blog. Um, so I got fitness and health. Um, education and information that I'll be dropping once a week. Um, I may start popping up some videos on there once I figure out the logistics of everything. Um, so just, you know, want to be able to help everybody out. Um, so if you want to reach out to me as far as email goes, um, you can reach out at n10fitnessblog at gmail.com. I recently created that so that I can have that specifically for anybody that's interested in me writing a workout plan, writing a meal, uh, you know, meal prep plan, something like that. Um, being able to help people just with education and information. You know, we all got tight budgets. I say we're all broke ballers. But at the end of the day, we're going to be on top. We're going to elevate ourselves. And we're going to stay motivated, you know? The, be the best blessing in life is to be able to wake up and open your eyes, you know? Like, for me personally, I don't care about anything else outside of waking up and opening my eyes because that gives me the gift to see, you know? And I'm okay with that. You know, if I, could, if I couldn't hear or I couldn't smell, I'd be okay with that because I want to be able to see. I'm a visual person. You know, I can still create. I can still be inspired. I can still do all those things. So that's something that's, you know, 
a blessing to me. But I feel blessed to be able to have the supporters that I have, have my number one fan here in the live chat, watching with me, listening to my voice, and, and showing love. So it's all about love. It's all about support. It's all about respect. So I hope y'all have a blessed day. Stay, stay elevated, stay positive, and stay motivated. Peace.